Hey, hey, happy Monday once again. Hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Welcome to episode 37 of Outside the Shoot. I'm your host, Randy Frame. Before we get rolling here, I want to throw out a big congratulation to Nebraska Cornhuskers head coach Rhonda Revel on her 1,000th victory this past weekend. Rhonda became the first coach in Nebraska athletics history to accomplish this feat. This week's OTC Player of the Week comes to us from Rio Vista High School out of Texas as senior Hala Linton takes home the weekly honors. Hala had an amazing week striking out 20 batters and allowing only one hit over eight innings, one of which included a perfect game, while also hitting a double, triple, two home runs, one being a grand slam, with 11 RBIs. That is quite a performance. Congrats Hala and best of luck the rest of the season. On to this week's guest, and we sat down and chatted with Kitchener Hallman Twins and USA Men's National Team member Cam Schiller. Cam has taken a different path in the game than most as he's played most of his career in the game of baseball and was a 2012 seventh round MLB selection by the Texas Rangers. Since turning to fast pitch in 2016, Cam has already been a two time All World selection at the ISCs and named to the US National Team, which is absolutely incredible. We're going to talk to Cam about those years playing baseball. We'll hear a great story about playing against Philadelphia Philly superstar Bryce Harper, the transition over to the game of fast pitch, as well as much more. We had a blast chatting with Cam, and you'll learn right away why he's loved and respected by all of his teammates. So as usual, grab that drink, sit back, relax, because here we go. I've got the world in my palm, lights, camera, action, it's on. I can't describe what I'm feeling, ain't never felt this freedom. I've got the world in my palm, lights, camera, action, it's on. All right, all right. Classified in yeah. the house all the time. Did you get? Did you see uh, Classified is uh, his video, or I'm sorry, his song opening up for uh, the, the Raptors, Raptors game. Sixers game? Yeah, that That's was awesome. sick, man. That yeah, was fantastic. That's so good. Maritime boy doing good. Friggin' right. Love hearing it. Yeah. So you had a busy day today, didn't you? A little bit. Uh, Six a.m. practice this morning. Uh, I had a one till two dome session with our senior U nineteen U twenty three mastodon, and then I had a two to three dome session with uh kids six to 12 and there were 21 of them today which was great Mm -hmm. and then i just came back from cole harbor we just coached uh our adam a team to a 2-2 tie in playoffs and played like goddamn shit (laughs) but anyway yeah and now i'm here with you so we can interview cam schiller and busy day talk about bryce harbor (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. it was a busy day but it's you know it's all i love every bit of it yeah we had a good session dome that was fun dome was great you uh, i'm sure your arm's sore because you pitched about nine (laughs) thousand wiffle balls yeah throwing it back to the old day when uh, we always played wiffle ball actually we used a gelmix ball in brookfield oh yeah yeah yeah. man we played a lot of that but uh no It's fun. Get most movement I've ever had in my life throwing a wiffle ball. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you the one thing about the wiffle ball is the way that we go through our stations. I think it's very important that, you know, when, the one we start at to where we end with wiffle balls mm. is really improving our guys' swings. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and you can see it. So yeah. that's exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. COVID cases, we had... Uh, yeah, not good again, man. I it's uh, I mean, it seems to be getting better, but like uh, I think Quebec had the number of the beast, six <laughs> six hundred and sixty six cases. Yeah. I think today or within the last yeah. twenty four hours, Ontario had almost eleven hundred. Um, Alberta had like two hundred and seventy or something. Mm. We had one alone in Nova Scotia. I'm not sure about PEI, New Brunswick, yeah. or Newfoundland, but it's it's uh, it, it's not looking good. Man. No, it's not. It's not. I mean, no. we've been hearing rublins and yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, so. How would you say you said something like uh, they mentioned that we're behind where they thought we were going to be yeah. coming into 2021. So the chances of nationals aren't looking, uh, not looking, looking that, that good. There's a, well, you heard that on the uh, two talk. talk right? yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if we can get the vaccine roll out, I mean, it's hard to say what's going to happen, but I mean, although they, they say that the vaccine won't be near completed in September anyway. So uh, not everybody will be vaccinated. Yeah, true enough, I guess. Well, anyway, you know what, as long as they keep doing and, and working towards getting everybody healthy again, yep. yeah, another year of ball being missed is, is not fantastic, but we got to be it healthy. Is. We want to be alive. Yeah, exactly. I do want to get to the fucking rock though. Jesus. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway, under our guest today, uh, yeah. this is going to be a different one. I mean, it is. Cam's 
played baseball the majority <laughs> of his whole life and yeah you know jumped into the fast pitch in 2016 for iscs and, yeah you know it's and what did he do in 2017 though <laughs> all world yeah motherfucker <laughs> like he just steps in and then all of a sudden he's all world yeah good for him though. unreal awesome. well i mean you see it a lot of baseball guys coming into our game yeah seem to struggle like from the hitting aspect because of the rise ball i find yeah the up and uh you know i we've had a few guys that yeah, come yeah, in yeah. i mean dudes come on yeah, to our for team sure, and, yeah i mean defensively defensively he's yeah, unreal but out. he's having an adjustment with with the with hitting but, yeah uh, yeah no question but it seemed cam cam seems to have uh <laughs> he seems to be doing okay yeah from what i understand yeah, two-time all, all world at the iscs and member team usa so yeah we got to talk to him about uh, what harv said to us today when harv was playing with jb and uh cam shows up in the cowboy boots and whatever yeah. hey fellas uh i'm here to play some ball and they're like who the <laughs> fuck is this guy <laughs> and then he's like wham bam bam yeah, bam exactly yeah, awesome. so uh yeah and little diddy on uh apparently played against bryce harv so we're gonna yeah we gotta touch on that touch on that for sure yeah. and uh yeah anyway let's uh let's get to cam awesome all right Yo. all right here we go cam thanks for coming on the podcast buddy yeah no thanks for having me guys how's uh how are you kelly and the kids making out in arizona Oh, good. Staying uh, reasonably uh, good in temperature down here compared to you guys, I think. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, what is your temperature right now? Yeah, what's temperature? Uh, we are about 60-ish Fahrenheit. I don't know the conversion, but... Uh, well, that's quite a bit warmer than we are. 69 is uh, 20 here. You can't so. say 69 on the podcast, Randy. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what's that? Jeans and a t-shirt is what I got on. Right, so right on. Yeah. I have long johns and pants <laughs> and two sweaters on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're fair enough way better than Texas, eh? Oh, geez, yeah. Oh, my God. Looks like they got hit pretty good. Jesus. That's the the amount of uh, NCAA games getting canceled there the last uh, two weeks has been unreal. Yeah, yeah, not to mention not used to that. Yeah, not to mention people don't have power. Yeah, true. Yeah, and there's no power. <laughs> so what have you been doing with your time since COVID hit? You've been able to get get any ball in or what? Um, Really about the same amount that we have been, you know, since I started playing anyway. We don't have a ton of ball around here, but – mostly slow pitch and nothing seemed to slow down actually it kind of picked up to be honest arizona got uh, a bunch more balls since a lot of the other states kind of closed down so. oh wow okay right on right on so your story's a little a little different than what we're used to uh, our guests on here because uh, you're primarily from baseball so uh i mean let's jump into that maybe tell us about uh, that side of the game first before we get into fast pitch and how you got your start in the game in baseball Okay. Um, I mean, I grew up, I grew up, everything was baseball Mm. and I played baseball since I could, can I barely walk? Basically my dad played professional baseball and my grandpa played professional baseball. So I was, uh, just shy of being born on a ball field. So, um, you know, all the way through, uh, I mean, I grew up with a cage in my garage basically. And, uh, you know, played until I was 23 and then, got let go and didn't really have anything else else to do and kind of got involved with uh fast pitch around town right on so uh, who was your uh your dad and grand granddad with who were they with growing up or like when playing professionally uh so my grandpa was with the uh phillies organization and my dad played with the san francisco giants organization jesus oh, nice so, not too shabby <laughs> or, or runs in the family yeah. then yeah that's awesome so, a little bit how uh how long careers did they have uh, about similar to mine, just a few years, mm. right uh, mostly just through college and then played a couple of years and kind of went another direction. Right on. That's awesome. You know, Randy and I were talking earlier about, uh, sports in the United States compared to in Canada. So like high school baseball, is that, does that draw a huge crowd? Like when you guys would be playing against rival high schools, kind of like the football Ty- scene is typically no, no, um, no, not so much down here anyway i mean i don't i can't speak for everywhere but no no, of course not. i mean we were probably lucky to have 50 people at a high school baseball game oh okay wow okay yeah compared to a football game down there in high school is a little little different eh football's big yeah Yeah. football is a different animal 
So. Yeah, for sure. For so sure. was there much fast pitch growing up in Arizona or was it just primarily baseball? So what I'm told, and I, like I said, I, I didn't grow up here. I moved here in 2004. So, um, there was a, there was a lot of history oh, in okay. Prescott, Arizona for fast pitch softball. Okay. Um, they actually have, um, a hall of fame is right downtown, uh, which I didn't know any of this, uh, growing up. So, um, you know, we had a league that was, I think, 10 to 12 teams while I was growing up. I filled in here and there for my wife's family team when I was 16, 17 years old, kind of before college. Okay, um, That's really all I knew about it. But as I've traveled and gone different places, people have heard and a lot of people I've talked to have actually played in Prescott, Arizona, you know, 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I played a couple of years with the team out of Utah and they mentioned about, you know, playing, playing tournaments in Prescott. So, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about there. Randy, okay. Randy, are you also going to talk about 2009 again? No, I this won't. is not your part. It's I won't bring that up. Cam. Okay. For fuck's sakes. <laughs> We're talking about Cam today. So, okay? so Cam, t- tell us about, uh, tell us about your time at Oral Roberts. Uh, must've been some fun, fun times for you there. Uh, yeah, no. So I was, I remember, I was a little hesitant going to Oklahoma. Um, I mean, we had some good ball on the West coast and I had some opportunities to play out here. And for whatever reason, it just felt right to go to Oral Roberts university in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And that was, um, something I don't regret at all. Uh, played a lot of good ball and it was, uh, it was honestly a good place to be. I mean, we had a lot of people getting picked up out of there and we played with some guys that are, uh, you know, currently in the major leagues right now. So, hmm a lot of fun yeah well you mentioned about getting picked up you get drafted by the texas rangers in the seventh round that must have been a pretty crazy feeling for you yeah i mean for me that was uh that was kind of the goal you know was mm. to play major league baseball growing up that was of really course. all i ever knew so for that to happen that was um like i said that was what i was striving for you know my whole life up until that point and it was a unique experience it was a fun ride i'm at the time, I was kind of bummed it was over. At the same time, as so I was kind of relieved. It was a weird, it was oh, a yeah. weird feeling. Hmm. So, what was the process like when you got drafted? Like that, like that, the day it happened. Like, what's the whole process there? I mean, kind of let take us in the in the world there. Um, I mean, you kind of got a pretty good idea leading up. Um, I mean, talk to kind of a lot of scouts. They'll give you their you know, their take on where they see the organization kind of making a move with you. So it's, it's a lot of texting, a lot of phone calls beforehand, um, kind of, but you don't really know what's going to happen. I mean, a lot of these guys are just telling you what they think. And then Mm -hmm. to finally actually get that call or, um, see your name kind of pop up on there was, uh, it it was pretty cool to be honest. I mean, it was, I can imagine, (laughs) you know, something, Something looking back, you probably didn't even appreciate as much as the at the time as to do now. But. Right. Mm-hmm. So, what was it like playing professional baseball in the minors? Was like you hear the stories, a lot of bus. Was there a lot of times on the bus there? Well, you watched Bull Durham, so yeah, that's what you're going. I did watch Bull Durham. Yeah, no. So surprisingly, no. And I love that movie. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Meat. You know, Bull Day is surprisingly accurate. So. I, and I just saw that they finally gave um, a pay hike for minor league baseball, but it was uh, I me mean, virtually make like no money. Yeah. I mean, it's the amount of money you make is just a total embarrassment. So if you plan on doing anything with your pay, actual paycheck, it's you're sorely mistaken. And, uh, you know, I remember we had, uh, you know, I signed at the time I signed for $10,000 and taxes were, I mean, it's just like, I got my check, it's like 6,000 something. I'm so already depressed. Right? So, so we, you know, we go off to, uh, the funny part was, is I got, I got sent to, um, Spokane, Washington, which is actually really close to where I grew up. Yeah. Oh, right on. And so it was kind of weird there. I actually knew a ton of people when I moved back to that area to go play ball, but well, that's good. Uh, then. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. So for me, it worked out fantastic, but the, um, uh, travel yeah horrible it, you don't go you know, hop on planes and minor league ball you hop on a bus and it's always 
after you play and games are at six thirty to seven. So you're getting on a bus at midnight and you're driving all night. And, um, oh, yeah. you know, we would have two to three off days of basically an entire summer. So it, you know, and it sounds fun. Like hmm. it sounds awesome. And a lot of it is, but it, the word grind is just, you know, underused in that regard. It's, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. So wow. a- any good stories from your time in Spokane? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> hey, oh, God. That's such a loaded Spokane. question. <laughs> yeah, you kind of caught me off guard with that. I don't know. Uh, not in particular. Nothing really sticks out. It's kind of. So you didn't kill anybody time. or anything like that. <laughs> a blur. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I texted him back and forth with uh, Ryan Boland today, and he said, ask him about playing against Bryce Harper. So you got to play against Bryce Harper. I did in college. Um, so <laughs> that's actually, that's funny you brought that up. Uh, <laughs> so this was in junior college. It was uh, actually at Yavapai College. It's right here where I live. Um, we were playing in Las Vegas. It's the first tournament I've played in in college. So this is my first games as well. And he was he was a little younger. So he graduated, got his GED, and then went to college. Basically, his so his senior year in college would have been his freshman year. Or sorry, his uh, senior in high school was his freshman year in college. Okay. And so he was, you know, 17, 18 years old playing against, you know, guys that are older than him. And he was already then quite a bit bigger than all of we were. You know, we were looking up to him at this time. It was just odd. He had a beard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nowhere near there. And, you know, the first game we played him, we go, uh, you know, I think we struck him out a couple times. Got a broken bat jam shot and we're kind of looking around like this guy's he's not all the hype <laughs> well, all right. and we play him the next game at their park and i think he hit two home runs and a triple off the wall oh shit wow. took off from there yeah he ended up hitting like 40 home runs that year in college which is just unreal with wood bat holy oh, shit yeah and yeah so i remember he hit a uh so we, we had this australian guy and he was he was a fiery little fucker you know he's <laughs> he didn't put up with anything and so he was going to kind of show him this was the one Bryce hit a just a screamer off the center field wall and they played a big park and he slides in for a triple throw it to third and he just starts or he just kind of holds the tag on him you know just like now oh, let's see what he's you know see what he's got yeah he turns around just takes him and shoves him off to the side like, <laughs> you are not gonna do that to me <laughs> <laughs> and that was uh that was Bryce Harper for us. We were like, you know, in that time we go, we, we went from all the way from this guy's no good to damn, this guy's really good to damn. Yeah, he's a prick. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, and he's got a full beard, that prick. <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was almost unfair. Yeah. Uh, that's freaking awesome. Yeah. So, uh, what led to the decision to, to leave baseball? Uh, well, I got. I got let go um, right before spring training in 2014. Got a phone call. Uh, they make it real quick, by the way. Oh. Uh, it's uh, hey, we're gonna go another direction. You know, thanks for thanks for hanging out. And I was kind of caught so off guard by it. I I t- <laughs> told the guy, hey, thanks for the heads up. And I remember thinking, like, well, what the hell did I just say that for? I got let go. <laughs> yeah. Shit. And so you kind of just sitting there like, huh, you know, and to that point, uh, baseball was my entire life. And so yeah. kind of reevaluate things and had a couple other offers to go to spring training um, with a couple different clubs. And it kind of just didn't feel right. So it was, you know, by that time I had had my my uh, firstborn. So it just felt like time to move on with life. Yeah. There you go. So, how did fat had fast pitch come into the picture? Has well, something to do with a pair of cowboy boots or something? Harv right. told us <laughs> yeah. that might that might be a little bit later. <laughs> so, this fast pitch came into the picture. We were, at the time I was back in Oklahoma and I was working out at my college. And so after that, my my wife's whole family's from Prescott, Arizona. So when that happened, we just we moved back kind of started getting settled um understandably i got bored come summertime uh and i called my brother-in-law who i knew had played at some point 
uh, you know, a bunch of softball and just, I was asking him if that league was still around and he goes, yeah, we can, uh, I'll talk to you, you know, our sponsors, see if we can get you like a tryout or something, see if you want to play, uh, come, you know, season. Like, yeah. Anything to be honest at this point, yeah. anything mm-hmm. I want to play ball. And so that was, you know, that would have been this basically that was the summer of 2015 and ended up playing the league, play the league. There are leagues, eight games, you know, and it wow. used to be halfway decent anymore. It's pretty rough. We're down to four teams now. And, you know, I'm trying to get a lot of the younger guys playing, but yeah. at the time the pitchers were, you know, mid fifties and everybody just started to have a good time. Yeah. Right on. So, when did you run into Harv and Blake and them as wearing the cowboy boots and the camo? <laughs> so, yeah, I guess. So it wasn't too far from that, obviously. Uh, so we ended up playing in this. Uh, some of the guys from here always kind of traveled just a little bit. And there's, I don't know if you guys know this, but everything here is wood bat. Like it's all wood bat softball. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Did not know that. So, we have wood bat nationals in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hmm. And uh, we, you know, we finished up the first year and some of these guys asked me if I want to go. I'm like, Oh, you know, there's, there's softball outside of town. I'm like, yeah, I'll go. I'll travel. <laughs> and so we go to Albuquerque and we're playing in this tournament. And I didn't know it at the time, but so Tony Mancha is playing <laughs> with, uh, with Mark Randa, who's still with the bombers now. Mm-hmm. And we're with this, really horrible team called the wolf pack it was basically just them too and you know a bunch of local guys from that area and we were getting down towards the final you know kind of the end of the day and mark stops by the dugout and he goes he goes hey you know saw you make a couple plays you want to uh you know i'm going to talk to our sponsor would you be interested in coming to play with us i'm like what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's more. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, we'll just, you know, so I gave him my number. I was like, well, just, just call me, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, and so he, you know, he ended up calling like the next day and there was some tournament in San Diego um, down on this reservation. And, you know, but Bob Berger asked if I would drive down there. Cause he said, Mark just said that he wanted to, Wanted me to look at a guy. So, so I drive down to just outside of San Diego, play in the res tournament. And the end of the tournament, he asked me if I want to play ISC. With him. Jesus I, Christ. I don't even know what ISC is. <laughs> oh. Sure. Uh, you know, and Bob was a good guy. And she yeah. took us to dinner, paid for my hotel. Like, this is a sweet deal already. Uh, so we went to this tournament in Long Beach, and that was where I met those guys at. And it was like in November. <laughs> Of that same year, uh, we played in Long Beach, and you know, from what I could gather at that time, Hunter was just kind of starting with the team. Harvard played the year before, and <laughs> they were they had a really good year, and <laughs> they were ready to go again. So that was that was literally how fast I got thrown into this whole deal. That's crazy, yeah. Because Harv said today that somehow you had taken another guy's spot. And you walked in with your cowboy boots and your camo hat, and Harvin and Blake were like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" <laughs> yeah, yeah I, could, uh, I could see that. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. At that time, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and the, Hunter's got his boots too. So oh yeah, yeah, that's we true. That far yeah. out of the realm there. No, no. I think he was actually excited at that time. He's like, "Oh fuck, somebody else <laughs> with their boots." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you you said you'd uh, have your first ISCs in in 2016. Uh, what do you recall about that? I mean that that must have been a totally different animal for you. You know, there's I've got two memories from that that first ISC. Um, the first one was basically just getting my doors blown off almost every at bat. That, yeah. yeah. Like I hit a lot of balls, like two, three inches above my thumbs. Oh, and yeah. Oh, wow. The other memory was just looking at how good the pitching was. Yeah. I, I remember standing there watching this, you know, the, the Gators Hill game. Not oh, knowing yeah. a single player on that field. <laughs> I'm standing there. I think I was standing next to, you know, Hunter and Harvey both. I'm like, dude, who, what is happening here? This is like a whole <laughs> other level. I don't know any of these guys. 
And, you know, as soon as they started explaining everything, and it was in that game, you know, that was a championship game. That was incredible. Yeah. Everything was just back and forth the whole time. That probably but, would have uh, been Adam against uh, Cleary. Cleary. Yeah. Yeah. I would guess. <laughs> yeah. And there was, they were both looked tired at the same time as good. And there was a lot of hitting. I remember thinking, damn, dude, I have got like three barrels all year. And you guys are smashing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really uh, awesome. So you can yeah, say you were impressed the, with it then. I'm hoping that you it, yeah. yeah, no, at that time, up until then, fast food shuffle to me was very easy. Like, oh, this is all wreck ball, you know, nothing. Yeah. So to go see yeah. what it actually could, you know, could be was, it was uh, kind of jaw dropping to me a little bit. You know, by you saying that, I wish it was more recognized or I wish more people could get exposure to it for that simple reason to see actually how good the game is especially at the highest level because it's exactly freaking sick it is and it's it gets way underappreciated and 100%. down here down here especially and i'm trying like crazy i've got three more tournaments i'm hosting down here nice just to try and get some good ball back out this way because all of the guys here that I play with, and we, you know, there's some good ball players here. Yeah. And, and they're all ex baseball players. Yeah. That, and to be honest, are kind of just, they're done putting in the extra work. They want to have a good time, but they're really good athletes at the right. same time. Yeah. And they just have no idea what's out there. No. Yeah. You know? And if there was something, you know, like when I had my eyes open to the whole thing, was like, oh, this is like rejuvenating. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm trying to get some good ball back here to let people know, like this isn't the league, isn't it? You know, no. these local tournaments, this isn't it. There's, there's real quality ball out there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, now, I love it. Freaking right. Now, I, I was told to ask you about uh, Mister Seven One Three, Peter. <laughs> no, it's funny that you bring him up. So I, he actually texted me today about coming out for the uh, Fourth of July term. No way. So yeah, it's totally. I haven't. I mean, I talked to him maybe once a year or so. We see him at a tournament here or there. But oh my god, Seven One Three. I, he's a good dude, man. <laughs> Herb's, Herb's gonna love hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. We had a unique group at that time. It was uh, fairly eclectic. Yeah. And no, that's funny. Yeah, he was a good dude. We, uh, he liked to talk, and he had all kinds of stories, just like Harp did on the other side. <laughs> yeah, <Just> one liner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the freaking guy. He he never shuts up. Never, Harp. You yeah. never shut up. <laughs> no, he well, he's never overbearing, but he no. never shuts up at the same time. It's like it's, yeah. this perfect medium of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Of oh, nothing. <laughs> Herb lives uh, two doors down from me, actually. So it's, it's quite funny to talk to him. Uh, Stop by yeah, to borrow something. It's like, holy fuck, I'll be back in an hour and a half, honey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. I miss my car, man. I was yeah. He's stuck to him not too long ago. I was wondering when he was going to be back down around. Uh, well, he's got another, another baby on the way here yeah. in the next couple of weeks. So. He did sign with... Uh, the axman though kingston oh yeah that's right for isc so yeah. yeah all right yeah if we ever get to play again but whatever i was gonna say or you got is anybody uh what's it looking like up there i know it's not good yeah getting down and out of the way i'm sure the united states looks like a you know yeah pretty looks like a giant fucking toilet on, <laughs> yeah holy yeah, shit nobody wants to come here and we're all like hey we enjoy it what are you guys doing <laughs> yeah our cases are dropping they're going down but it's still to the point where there's a really good chance there won't be a national tournament this summer in Canada. Ah, that's uh, even within, even just within Canada. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. That's too bad. It is. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Now let's jump to 2017. Uh, you guys had a really good run losing in the finals of the ISCs to Hill United. Uh, you'd be named to your first ISC world team, which blows me away that <laughs> after one year, but, yeah, it's not uh, fair for fuck's sake. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe talk to us about that run and, and what you remember about it. Um, I, I remember Devo throwing his ass off. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. We, had, we had put together and I say we, I mean, I was just a part of it, but, uh, a pretty damn good team, uh, kind of combined you know, the, that we had combined, you know, JB with the bombers yeah. that year. And, uh, they had made some hard decisions and we put, you know, a group together that really didn't click at all. Uh, 
we had a bunch of different groups of people just never quite came together. I'm still astonished as to the run that we made with that yeah. feel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, we, we expected to be good, but uh, the way we won some of those games and then, you know, obviously we scored just enough for Devo. It wasn't like we offensively carried anybody, but yeah, Devo he just grabbed the ball and yeah, went off. Lights out. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty special to play behind him. You know, we had to play very little defense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you ran into a, a pretty solid club in Hill United in the finals yeah, there. <laughs> Yeah, they were they were nails. Obviously, that was I mean those that, that was my first at bats off of Adam ever. Oh yeah, and I remember thinking that was a whole other animal there hmm. too. You know, it's it had a pretty good ISC and it was getting comfortable and everything was going good. And and then I remember facing Adam and it was just it was had a whole nother gear to it. Yeah. <laughs> At yeah. that time, you could do, you know, when you could hear the ball hissing, it's a, <laughs> it's a different. Yeah. <laughs> it's yelling at you. Well, I mean, yeah, you've yeah. You faced guys like him and, and, and Cheese, like yeah. Kirkpatrick and, and Sean and, 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 and Devo, Scove, all those guys. I mean, it's, yeah. what they can do with the ball is, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it really is. I had nothing, I mean, I'd seen nothing quite like that, you know, and that year I just decided to be, you know, real aggressive, you know, do you know what, we're just going to go down hacking here. And, you know, actually kind of a funny story, uh, that championship game in 2017, I, I asked Blake Hunter, Hey man, what's, you know, what are we, uh, what are we working here with Adam? Obviously he's, you know, pretty much the best. Uh, that's, I need a little bit more of a scouting report than just that. Yeah. But what, what's he got? He goes, well, hard up, hard down. Both are good, but he doesn't have a change. So, you know, just look hard. I'm like, okay, well, I can deal with that. Mm-hmm. So I remember the first, they had me leading off this time, which I'd never let off in my life. So <laughs> I had to stop off. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is cool. I'm fine with it. And so first pitch of the game, I remember taking up just a hard dipper, basically right down the middle and I pulled it off where I got <laughs> so I'm like all right you know I'm, I'm on it I'm on it and uh I don't remember what the next pitch was but I know the third one was a change up and I had to have missed it by 10 feet <laughs> and I, I turn over and there's a, and Hunter, I think he was in third place standing right outside of the dugout and he gives me this like shoulder shrug like didn't know he had it. where'd it come from <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, that was just Blake saying, yeah. fuck you, Cam. You're not showing me up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he, well, he showed up on Thursday that year and just hit everything in sight. Yeah. So he's he's kind of rolling when he wants to smash <laughs> his <laughs> shitty scouting report. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Actually, that's a question I wanted to ask you. Uh, the, what's, what's the difference between, you know, facing a 90 mile per hour baseball as opposed to, you know, getting in there against a guy like Adam or Devo and and being that much close what what what, can you tell us what the difference is uh yeah so i've actually thought about this you know enough because it's a question that kind of comes up a lot Mm -hmm. haven't seen you know 100 mile per hour baseballs versus you know it's basically as fast as you can get in fast pitch Mm -hmm. and um you know a 100 mile an hour fastball is it's fast but it's not it's still not quite like a hard, you know, like facing, you know, 85 to 89 in fast pitch. Right. Right. You know, obviously that still has a whole nother gear to it. Uh, but being that close the ball, a little bit bigger. Yeah. It's, you know, I always kind of described fast pitch was it was fast pitch best on best. Both sides compared fast pitch is a little bit harder to make contact Mm -hmm. but if you do your chances are way better yeah so you know baseball you have timing rhythm you have to generate leverage uh the bats are a little bit heavier so that's it all kind of plays a factor into right uh having success not just necessarily hitting the ball so i would say i mean i would rather to me fast pitch is a little bit easier in that regard that it's more reaction based. And even though it is a lot faster, 
if you can guess right, your chances are better of getting I got you. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Did you have a hard time adjusting to the up, like the rise ball compared to baseball? Cause baseball is typically a lot down, obviously. Um, I think my, my adjustment period was, I think a little bit shorter than normal. And, and that's due solely to the fact that everybody that finally knew who I was. So the, when I first started playing, nobody knows who you are. And then they yeah. hear, you, play you know, it's, it, this yeah. is, yeah, this guy was a baseball player. Give him the rise ball. Yeah. Every single time. And I hear, you know, our guy saying, Hey, this guy's a baseball player. Just throw him the rise. So I made a specific point at that time. Like if I'm going to swing at it, I'm going to swing over it, you know? Gotcha. And I don't think a lot of guys were able to do that. I mean, I had a, a bunch of guys that I played in college with that were real good ball players. Um, you know, I'd have them come to tournaments and bring them with us and come play. And they could not make that adjustment. Yeah. And it kind of, it was curious to me. I didn't understand it fully. Like, Hey, you know, you see it go and just guess a little bit. Right. But, at the same time as, you know, I don't think they gave it enough time. Yeah, of course not. To no. really make an adjustment before they're like, yeah, yeah, this is not worth it. This game sucks. I'm going to play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That kind of speaks to your athletic ability, too, to be able to pick up and, and guess. Not You know, it is a guessing game. There's no question. Uh, unless, you can, speed, unless you can pick up spins. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was right on top of you. I were pretty good. But, like, I mean, that's still the reaction time was like, I and mean, that's so so short mm -hmm. by the time they're jumping and everything is coming at you like that it was just became this calculated guessing game for me um you know and then as you play it slows down a little bit i mean of i'm course. sure you guys kind of grew up playing I'm that sure. you've yeah. seen you know school fields up there thrown to you all the time you're gonna have a chance to kind of get used to that i've got Right now, I'm by far the hardest throw in our league, and I am horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh shit, that's awesome. That's hilarious. So, and he pitches. I didn't fuck. Yeah. Next year, it'll be all fucking world pitcher for fuck's sake. I know. Yeah. No. <laughs> it was. It got a little boring until I started throwing, and then it became fun again. So down here. Yeah. Down here, I pitch. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun though. Pitching yeah. is blast. Oh yeah. yeah, that's. I always wanted to pitch everywhere. I just wasn't. Did I wasn't better there than I was anywhere else. Yeah, so yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, for me. So after that 2017 year, did uh, and you got your all world. Did you kind of uh, think about the game a little differently as far as you know how you approached it, or like as far as traveling and whatnot? Um, as far as traveling, no, I always loved to travel. Right. And that was something that just kind of, I mean, I fit right into that schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so to me, it was just like, Hey, whatever, you know, if somebody wants me to go somewhere or has an opportunity for me, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll go. Yep. I, yeah. even if I, I paid my way to plenty of places. I just want to go play. Uh, so in, in that regard, no, I didn't really change. I was, I was up for anything. Okay. Um, I did begin to see kind of what it could be, you know, moving forward and especially on the national team side of stuff, which, yeah. Yeah. you know, in 2016, still, I had no idea there was even a national team. Like <laughs> Shit. It still didn't like none of that. I never even took the time really to Google it, yeah. I guess. And maybe that would have been helpful. <laughs> um, but I remember talking to Danny Brucker, not even knowing that there was a national team. Wow. Wow. So that, and that all kind of was still, you know, coming at the end of that 16. And then kind of when I figured that out, um, uh, I began to take it a little bit more seriously. It didn't yeah. really affect my, any, any sort of training regimen, but right. just the fact that you come a little bit more prepared each yeah. time and you are going to, I'm going to take the time to think about, what guys were throwing me and remember the sequences. And that was what I took pride in with baseball was, was, you know, picking up on little cues. Um, but you know, that, that was when that kind of started to change was 2017. Yeah. Was it, was it 2017 when you were named to the men's national team? Um, so I went 2017, I went on the little kind of exhibition tour that the, uh, 
uh, national team did before the ISF up in Whitehorse. Oh, all yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, so I kind of played with them all summer. Yeah. Uh, didn't, you know, I played, I obviously played, but not a ton. I watched, it was probably the most I've ever sat in my life, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and which was totally fine. I was at that point, I'm just happy to be there and just happy to travel and mm-hmm. had you, a great time. And do you think that helped uh, you at all? You know, getting to sit there and, you know, take I do. Sort of things in? I learned a lot doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it was, um, one, I gained a lot more respect for really good teammates that don't play that much. I did oh, yeah. gain a lot of respect for that because that, that is not the easiest thing to do. No. Uh, and at the same time, I got a chance to watch and learn and see, you know, who does what and what's successful and, and, and kind of break it down without just being, you know, cause being new to something like that. And obviously I've been around ball forever, but it's still a different game mm-hmm. and, and, uh, everything's happening so fast. Yeah, you know, yeah. So they're telling you, hey, he's you know his glove flares, uh, you know, yada yada. It's, it's a quorum, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't see any of that. Shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, that is almost de- like detrimental to me moving forward here because now I'm looking for something I don't even really know. <laughs> yeah, but to kind of slow it down on the outside and and just watch it that way and have everything develop without just being in the middle of that was there was a learning experience there oh, that good. it was it was good. That's awesome, man. Now, like a lot of uh, a lot of people don't get to represent their country on a national level. So, I mean, how special was it for you to be, you know, named to Team USA and, and get the Don the red, red, white, and blue? Um, it, to be honest, that was obviously very special. Hmm. Uh, it was not wasn't necessarily a dream yeah. growing up. One because I just didn't know about no, it. If it was <laughs> if it was baseball. <laughs> It would have been phenomenal. Like that would have been, you know, that's just that's a crowning achievement, um, you know. And then moving forward, and kind of like I said, it all happened so fast, and I think I appreciate it more now than I did at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, with his, with his, kind of everything that was going on, and really just, I didn't even have an appreciation for it when it happened. Yeah, if that makes any sense at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear you. Sure. Well, what do you remember about your first international event with the team? Um, I was a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I mean, I, it wasn't like an overbearing nervous because I mean, still everywhere you go, we don't have that many fans. I mean, we in minor league baseball in our crappy little complex, we averaged like ten thousand people. So it was, it still had this, you know, kind of there was still more nerve wracking there. But at the same time, was I had something to prove, and I still wasn't a hundred percent confident in my ability and I was not prepared to what I would normally have been Mm -hmm. for something like that. But, uh, no, I do remember it being pretty special. I remember remember being in the field, kind of just looking around. And I mean, you guys know when you look at Canada on the Jersey or you look at USA on the Jersey, there's, there's something to be said for that. It gives you this little chill. I guess. Absolutely. I guess. Yeah. I mean, there's just no way around it really, unless you just don't care, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you got to play in the WSBCs in, in Prague and Pan Am games in, in Lima there in 2019 and you'd win the silver medal. How special was that? Um, you know, that was pretty cool. And in being, you know, obviously there's a lot of factors that go into that and just kind of hearing the history of basically how the U S has been in the last 20 years you know, that was kind of a big deal for us. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, being part of that and those, you know, none of that, none of that was easy. And to be honest, I felt like we overplayed a lot of that. I really did. I, I felt like maybe we were, uh, we didn't, you know, well, obviously we expected to do good, but in the back of everybody's mind's like, you know, it's just, we're just, we may be not on the same level as everybody. We just, we understand that. Mm-hmm. But we're there to compete at the same time. And so when we're every game's close, every game's a grind really doesn't blow anybody out, but it was, uh, you know, it was pretty special for us mm-hmm. being able to say that, you know, we grabbed a silver medal and for the first time in, you know, close to 20 years, it's pretty cool. Yeah, man. Nothing to sneeze out there. Absolutely. It's crazy. Freaking right. I just Actually, wish Canada was there. That would have been better. Yeah, that was fucked up. We don't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I haven't heard much on it. No, no. 
We'll, we can talk about Randy's 2009 pitching performance against the <laughs> Kitchener River Sharks if you like. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about that too many times. <laughs> too many fucking times. Way too many. Uh, actually, speaking about Kitchener, uh, oh, yeah. you you played with them in 2019. Was that? Did you join them in 2019? That was your first year with them? For the yes. Nazis? So yeah. how did that all come about? Um, actually, so in 2017, um, Ron Hackett actually uh, contacted me kind of just, just casually seeing what I was doing. Told him I was going back to the Bombers. He said, no problem. Let me know if you want to do anything. So then next year kind of came along, same deal. Told him, you know, I'm planning on staying with the Bombers. He said, awesome. Just let me know. You kind of the same thing. And then um, after 2018 at ISC, uh, you know, Bob Berger was our sponsor for the Bombers. And he said that he was probably going to be done. And so, you know, I, and, and Bob was the first one that gave me a shot and, yeah. you know, virtually nobody would give somebody that new, a legitimate starting shot yeah. right away. Yeah. So there was a lot of respect that I had for him, you know, he was right out of the gate. So I told him, I said, as long as you do this, you know what, I'm here. You do what you say you're going to do. I got a lot of respect for that. Mm-hmm. And he, yeah, at that time he was just kind of done. So I said, okay, well, I, you know what, I'll give you a month. Because I have a feeling you might change your mind. Well, month goes by. He's still texting me. Hey, did you find a team? You need me to help you find a team? Like, no, I told you I'd give you this amount of time. So I talked to him at the end. And he's still, you know, going on. I, I, uh, I'm planning on being done. You know, thank you. Just, we're good. And so I, you know, shot, uh, you know, Ron Hackett a message. And... They were at that time had room and were happy to have me. And two weeks later, Bob had another team. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Oh, I got another sponsor. I'm back in. And then he knew exactly what happened. And he goes, you know what? I, I not even going to say a word. This is totally on me, but, uh, you know, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're taking care of him. So that was, oh, that's great. Jeez. That went about. So, um, it was, that was smooth for me. I never wanted to be, really the guy just bouncing around mm. chasing money and no, I, I think, never yeah i think you did it right for sure so how'd you how'd you enjoy your time with the uh, with them there in 2019 uh it was awesome yeah i mean they're just a very very professional organization yep. and is uh, there's not even one negative thing i could think to that would even awesome. come up yeah, so it's good. it was a lot of really good people involved. Yeah. yeah, I mean, getting to play with you know Cleary and and Bowley and them. Not like, bad I mean, at all. They're, yeah, uh, Sean's all right. Yeah, he's <laughs> not bad. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, Cam, were you going back with them this year as well and last year? I guess with Kitchener. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because Justin, Justin is also Scof, signed Scof with them. Yeah. Too, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yeah, yeah. I did hear that. We've actually had a fair amount of changes. I can't even. St- I don't even know if I know them all, but. Um, yeah, I heard. Uh, I heard. So Scope is doing something. I'm not sure exactly what, but uh, you know, and I heard Ryan was planning on coming down or trying to get down, but it seems like a jumbled mess right now. Yeah, for sure it does. Yeah, everything is <laughs> COVID stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we get on to a uh, thing we end with player association, I want to ask you what, who are some of the, uh, I mean, you said you faced Adam, but is there any other pitchers that you've, you faced that, you know, you're like, wow, these guys are. Yeah. And your long softball yeah, career. You're long for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. All the time I've been around. Uh, <laughs> or was yeah, that one I mean, left-handed honestly. guy in Arizona? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like a guy throwing 62. It's great spin. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I still, Cheese just is tough. Man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, a thousand people could say this, but uh, yeah, the other one, the other one that gives me trouble, and I, I bet you couldn't guess it, but it's uh, John Guistala gives me fits. Really? Yeah. Huh. I'm throwing him a shout out right now. Wow. He's going to be pumped to hear this. Gu- he's, he's a big fan of Classified it's, that, uh, that's that, right, that yeah. we have for the podcast that that's does right. our music for the podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I've, 
Not surprised. He's great, dude. Hit, yeah, cheese, John Quistala. <laughs> right. Shit. That's crazy. <laughs> right on. Shout out, John. <laughs> so uh, on to our player association thing. We end, end the podcast with this where uh, I'll throw out a name and you can uh, say as much or as little about them as you want. So Ted Cruz. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <Christ>. No comment. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. All right. uh, let's start off with uh, friend of the show, uh, Blake Hunter. <laughs> Hunter. Um, you know, my folks always told me if you don't have anything nice to say about anybody. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hunter. He, yeah, he was one of the first guys I ever met, basically, from Canada that played. Uh, whole different ball game it was nice to see somebody else in boots yeah. <laughs> uh we had some good times but no i respect him a, a whole hell of a lot as a ball player and you know even just watching uh watching him compete was just a different different deal that was right at the beginning of when at that time i saw people take fast pitch softball seriously mm-hmm. yeah. so it was um, you know, he, he was, he was in that category of, you know, this was something that he really wanted to do. And that was eye opening for me. And so I have a lot of respect for that. All right. Hold on. Uh, next is, uh, Devin McCullough. Devo. Um, I like drinking beers with Devo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's a good time. I'm sure a lot of people can say that too, but, yeah. uh, one hell of a competitor, man. I, this is always tough. This is always tough. There's, and there's a few guys that I would say this about, but you know, if you had to, if you had to choose one guy to, to give a ball to, you know, that, that you knew was going to go give it everything they had. And, and, Mm -hmm. um, what's the word to try being shy or fearful. Wasn't going to be a factor. Right. You know, he's just going to grab it and go. And, (laughs) <laughs> on a story with this and this is uh this one still kills me because it was so blatantly obvious but this is devo to a t we're uh 2018 up in kitchener we're playing ostrander who was a good team and i think they had chapman at that time who could shut down anybody you know nobody really knew him yeah and they had a couple hitters in their lineup one of them being ryan merriman and we had a consensus before the game even started like hey you know there's like two guys in this lineup that have a chance to really you know beat you on any sort of you know statistical level and this you know merriman's one of them so he comes up you know i don't even remember what the score was and nobody was on it was like two outs it was a total situation where you could pitch around a guy mm-hmm. and you know and, and he knows this everybody's saying hey you know be careful and he looks around and he looks over and he goes this guy's a jump <laughs> he right down. This guy hit it, 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 right. He hit it out. And so now <laughs> I think we're losing, maybe, or maybe it tied it. It might have tied Holy it. Holy fuck. And game goes on, and, you know, Devo's like, ah, oh, yeah, 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 fucking And so it, it comes up again. Same kind of situation. I think there might have even been a guy on, still a situation to walk him. I remember walking to the circle, like, hey, Devo, you know, I get it. You could see, you could strike him out all day long, but guy on deck, you actually have struck out <laughs> all <every> day long. <laughs> yeah. And so we should probably think about doing this. He goes, ah, yeah, all right. And he goes right at him again. He hits another one. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> so we lost. Oh, shit. And now we're in the, yes. And this was like uh, <laughs> Tuesday or Monday or Tuesday, I see. Totally shouldn't have lost him. Oh, and uh, and that was Devo. to me. That was Devo. It's like he's like, fuck. It doesn't matter who you are, what time you're going at you. <laughs> yeah. Win, lose, anything. And I, like I said, I have a lot of respect for that. At the same time as that was that one was frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my That's god, fucked. that is crazy. Yeah. And awesome at the same time. So awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next is uh, Ryan Bolin. Oh boy, it's fantastic teammate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I didn't, I haven't had a chance to get to know him as well as I will, but, uh, he's, uh, he's one of the guys that you can truly say cares about the team more than himself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's not that many guys like that, you know, and which is why he's to the twins. He's a, you know, he's a prized, prized player. And that is, you know, that's the reason why it's hard to be, it's hard to be a good leader. One, you know? 
Um, I have a lot of respect for that because I am really not one in that sense. So mm -hmm. I, when I see a good one, you know it. Right. And, uh, you know, so, so that's what I have to say about him. You know, I, none of it really has anything to do with playing. Obviously he's yeah. a hell of a ball player. Yeah. But, uh, just to watch him, you know, just, just lead in the way he does. That is not, not anything but positive. That's awesome. Man. Right on. That's good. Yeah. Bully had good things to say about you when he was texting with Randy today. Yeah. Um, Believe it or not. Next is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, I had to say that. It's next written, is. Uh, it's written in front of me. Matt Palazzo. Matt Palazzo. Wow. Uh, I was actually just talked to him the other day, too. He's a. Uh, he's a gem, man. And he's a total wild card at the same time. Uh, but just nothing. Nothing but positivity out of the guy. Whether he doesn't matter what bar you're getting kicked out of, uh, <laughs> just always good things. Uh, but oh, I love Matty. I hope he keeps. I hope he keeps playing because honestly, he was he was one of the reasons I really enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed playing and traveling. You know, being a part of that. He's just a absolute blast to be around. Awesome, awesome, awesome. awesome. And the last one is uh, you mentioned him early, Tony Mancha. Tony. Oh God. Tony's a hell of a competitor, man. Um, he was actually the first, first legitimate, you know, open level pitcher that I ever faced. And I still remember that at bat, like it was yesterday. And I remember it because I only heard the ball. I didn't see it. <laughs> and I was just like turning around going, what the hell? And it, who is this guy? And oh, you know, that's Tony Mancha. That's pitch for USA. Like, well, that makes sense. I don't feel quite so bad, but he's uh, he's another one. Really, he scares a lot of people, and he comes off pretty intimidating. He's a giant teddy bear. Yeah, and he's a good dude, and he'll uh, he would do anything for you. I know some of the uh, some of the Canadians. You can ask Cowick about him. It's yeah, said a couple things about not wanting to mess with Tony, but. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh. That's it's a lot of fun. I hope he comes back and does one more cycle. So we'll see. Right on. Well, Cam, I got to thank you for coming on. I mean, this has been awesome, you know, getting to see the, hear about the, uh, the baseball side of thing with you and, and how you, how you grew into the fast pitch, you know, pretty, pretty friggin' quick. I mean, two ISC worlds already. And I mean, you, you're just, you, you're, it's phenomenal. Well, it's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's stop talking about it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, no, gotta, gotta <laughs> thank you for coming on, man. Like, really though no i appreciate you guys for having me this was a blast great take care of yourself be safe you too all right man <laughs> all right see you cam buddy see you brother Bye. man and why'd you ask about ted cruz you did i know i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome though what i mean what a beauty yeah freak just uh you know hearing about the I, i'm glad we asked about the bryce bryce harper yeah so that was yeah. that's pretty cool Fucking guy had a beard yeah he was 12 no <laughs> and he was cocky yeah big Imag surprise Jeez, that. wow that's weird yeah yeah i like the fact that uh cam talked about his appreciation for our game yeah and you know he didn't even realize like what there's ball outside of this yeah. what there's ball outside of here yeah. what there's what the fuck's isc <laughs> yeah, exactly like, like yeah then, i had to google team usa like <laughs> it's that's unreal. sick i love it i yeah. love it and yeah i hope that he does uh have success with bringing tournaments down to his area and, and building the sport down there too absolutely fantastic yeah. yeah for sure i mean I, like as long as you keep building the game i mean you know it, if we can get people playing here you know it doesn't matter if it's one or two teams and yeah it doesn't matter if it's in arizona if it's in new mexico if it's in manitoba if it's in pei you know what i mean Dutch settlement yeah exactly so i mean <laughs> keep growing the game yeah for sure and anyway. I, I think he loves it and yeah. uh, i think he's working hard at it so it's good and uh, yeah and another thing too like uh his appreciation for playing the sport and seeing like what ryan bowen's mm. uh, you know his whole adventurous you know I, i'm the leader of this team this is how it's going to yeah. be ran and and ryan's such a great guy and such a promoter of our sport too that hopefully cam will carry that back to the well, that's what i was well. thinking yeah. you know imagine what it's going to be like when, you know if he gets to play a couple of years under bully and yeah and I mean, a couple of those other guys yeah. like he gets to see a lot more yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah enough about the noofs anyway yeah. okay yeah uh, <laughs> anyway another week <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> yeah let's wrap this up wrap this shit up and listen to some classified stay safe out there uh, follow covid rules wash your hands social distance be safe my friends classified she's been waiting for me through the whole night candle burning high on a cold night waiting in the dark with the low light got me feeling good when she holds
tight. She ain't gotta do much. Ain't gotta do much. She ain't gotta do much. Ain't gotta do much. Yeah, look, I'll be frank. I ain't a ladies man. Got no Mercedes Benz. Style's weak. Got a pasty tan. But this girl rock a fella like a Jay-Z fan. And she tell me that I'm cuter than a baby lamb. Damn. I know it's corny and shit, but look, I'm almost 40 with this. I ain't just some only kid. I need a chick I can hang with and bang with. Understand me, I ain't talking about language. We watch a movie, then we laugh about it. Uh, smoke a doobie, then we laugh about it. Uh, we argue, then we laugh about it. She got me smiling, ain't no way around it. Now she waiting for me. We do the whole night. Yeah. Candle burning high on a cold night. Woo. Waiting in the dark with the low light. Yeah. Got me feeling good when she hold tight. She ain't got a home to do it, cause she do it good. Selfie, don't impress me. Lady in the street, a freak in the bed. She never trying too hard till it's real sexually. Uh, I'm curious, I want to see her naked. Maybe because she leaves a bit to the imagination. She don't give everybody an open invitation. I guess it's why I'm fascinated. Look.